Today we are going to be looking at this, a USB credit card swiper. If you enjoy my tutorials and would like to see more, please think about contributing to my Patreon account at patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. Now this particular USB credit card swiper I got off Amazon for I think probably about $12. Um, and it works as a HID device. For those of you who don't know what a HID device is, that's H-I-D. It stands for Human Interface Device. Basically, you plug this in and the computer detects it as a keyboard. So if your computer can accept a keyboard, this should work on it. And then, you know, whatever software you're using, which we're going to write something today in Bash, um, as long as it, has, it can take text input, you swipe the card and it outputs all the data that's on the strip. Now, on cards, let me grab some here. Like, these three cards all have magnetic strips on the back. Yeah, look at that, there we go. Um, these are hotel room card keys. Uh, I got them a little bit before I bought the card swiper. I was uh, on a trip and I held on to these because they reprogram the doors after you leave, so you, you keep these cards. They actually work as coupons too. These ones have pizza on them. Um, now, credit card swipes, the, the strips on them, the magnetic strips, are basically the same thing as an old cassette tape. In fact, if you look inside any card, credit card swiper, you look in there, it actually looks just like a uh, the head of a tape recorder, because it basically is. Um, and what happens is you swipe this, and basically uh, on some credit card swipers, it just plays audio into an audio input, and then the software decodes it. With this particular device, it's much easier than that. You don't need to decode it because the device itself decodes it, and again, just types it as a keyboard. I do want to note that this particular uh, swiper, which I'll try to remember to put a link in the description to uh, it on Amazon, or you can just search USB card swipers on Amazon, and it should come up, um, is that it is a three... Um, three track, I think it's called, a three track card swiper, uh, which these strips can have multiple sizes on them. So if you look at this, let me turn off my automatic focus here. And you can see I've got two credit cards here and then one of the hotel room keys. And you can see that the hotel room key strip is much bigger. Um, I'm assuming if these are probably three, maybe this is a five track swiper, I'm not, uh, swipe that uh, strip. I'm not 100% sure on how many tracks. Um, if I swipe this card, I kind of just get a end line character. I'm thinking that maybe the data is on those other two tracks and my card reader can't read it. But credit cards and my driver's license, which we'll also be looking at, will uh, work. There we go. Uh, and so let's let's dive into the code. Okay, let's dive right in. Again, as always, I'm using Vim as my text editor, but you can use whatever text editor you prefer. I'm gonna call this script swipe.sh. And uh, just while we're in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a card and I'm going to swipe it. There we go. So this is the, the data from the card. And of course we can, with a credit card, it's pretty simple and straightforward. You can look at the card and see the, the card number and you can see that this is the credit card number right here. You can also see that this is obviously the name and first name, or last name, then first name divided by a slash. And then right here is the expiration date, 2015. The month is five. And then there's other data here now and some other symbols, of course. Uh, if you just get out Google and Google uh, magnetic card, credit card, swipe format, or something to that effect, you'll get a bunch of sites telling you what the different characters and where everything is. Uh, and you can do the same thing for driver's license and other cards as well because they're somewhat of a standard format. Uh, so here's an example of a website. Right here you can see uh, this website this is just one that comes up on Google. Uh, you have your length of the length of, of this particular field. Uh, and this one's one character. It's the dollar, the percentage sign, which basically says this is a, a track. Uh, then you have the format code, which is one character. And if it's a B, that indicates that it is a credit card or debit card. So of course you can see right up here, we have the B, meaning this is a credit card and we know that already, but if you wanted to write one code that can read multiple different formats of magnetic strips, uh, that would be an indicator to what 
portion, what function in your program, if you were those functions, would be. And of course, you got your credit card number, and then you got the delimiters, which we're going to use to extract the information, the caret symbols there, and then the four digit expiration date, and service codes, and other stuff like that. So let's go ahead. I'm going to leave this on the screen here so that we can use it as a reference. But uh, of course, our first line of our code is, <coughs> excuse me, uh, bash, uh, it's our shebang line telling our operating system that this code is a bash script and that you should use the bash interpreter. I personally like to clear the screen at the beginning of my codes. I think it looks nice. And then we're going to say welcome, a little welcome message uh, for your program. Now we want to be able to swipe the card get the information, display it, and then not have the user have to start the program over again. So we're going to um, put everything in a loop so that the program continues until the till we choose to exit or it's killed by the end user, which we will put in a exit feature. But for now, we're just going to say while one, which is how I do it. Different people do it different things, different ways. Uh, one just indicates true. Uh, so it will be true and we'll continue to loop until it's killed. Next, we're going to say, please swipe your card. And then we're going to use the read function. Again, uh, this is, I'm assuming you know the basics of shell scripts. I have lots of tutorials on echo and while loops and clearing the screen and reading data from the user uh, and all that sort of stuff and variables. We're going to be using the cut command a lot in here to divide up variables. I've gone all over that in previous tutorials. I recommend watching my previous tutorials. This one's just more focused on how to cut the information for this particular uh, task at hand, which is reading a credit card. I don't want those quotation marks there. So we're going to use read, which waits for the user to type some input. And again, this credit card swiper is a hid device, so it's no different than using a keyboard. Uh, so we're going to say read what is typed and save it to a variable called data. Okay. Uh, at this point, I'm going to clear the screen again. And we're going to create some variables here. Uh, and one of the things we want is the credit card number. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the variable of data and we're going to cut it up. Now, this could be done with some bash internal commands, but I'm just very used to using the cut command. So that's what I'm going to use. Uh, of course, if you're more if you're more at using more better, more better, if you're better than me at using the internal bash functionality, you can do this without the external command of cut. But cut's going to be pr on pretty much every system that you're going to be working with pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to say dollar sign and then parentheses, which is saying the variable that we're creating, which is num uh, for number, uh, is going to be the output of whatever commands we put inside these parentheses. And then we're going to say data which is the, the full string, basically in our case right here, it's this. And we want to find everything after this B and before this caret symbol. So we're going to say cut with a delimiter of B. And we're going to say field two. So that's a field one is whatever's before the B. Field two is everything after the B. Uh, and then we're going to take that since at this point num is everything past the B, we want to cut that to everything before this caret symbol. So we're going to cut again, and we're going to say with a delimiter of the caret symbol field one. Next we're going to say name, and here we're going to grab the full name, and then we'll divide that up for the first name and last name after that. So we're going to say echo again, the dollar sign data for the variable of data, and uh, the colors don't look right. Oh, because I didn't put the dollar sign here. I was like, that's not right. Okay. Uh, so we're going to say cut with a delimiter of, and the name, as you can see, is between the two caret symbols. So if we're dividing up, a, if we're using the delimiter of the caret symbol, we've got three fields field one, field two, and field three, and of course we want field two in this case, so dash F2. So that will get us the full name, which right now the variable name is Smith slash John. So what we're gonna say is we want the last name, 
to equal uh, whatever name is. We're going to pipe that into the cut command, and this time we're going to use the delimiter of a oops, forward slash. And this is the last name. The last name comes first in this case, so we're going to say F1. So basically, name is this. We're saying take that, everything before that first slash. Next, let's just cheat and copy and paste that. And we will say F name for first name. And it's the same thing, but it's everything after that forward slash. And this should actually be like that. There we go. <clears throat> now the expiration date. The expiration date is going to be a little bit different. We're going to use the cut command to get everything after the second caret. But there's no real special delimiter. We don't know if this is always going to be a one, you know? And there's also a one in the thing. So it's not a good way to divide up. So we're going to grab, first off, everything this after this second caret and put that into a variable called x date. And then we're going to take the expiration date, which is all this, and just say, grab the first two characters for the year and then grab characters three and four for the month because the date will always be a four character um, in size. So we'll say x date equals and we'll say dollar sign echo, oh sorry, dollar sign and inside parentheses echo and we'll say dollar sign data and we'll pipe that into the cut command with a delimiter of, and don't forget, I put that in the wrong spot, there we go, of the caret symbol. And we want field three. So again, right now, expiration date equals all that. So now we're going to say, and again, I've gone over all this in previous tutorials. I want to make that clear. I'm assuming you know the basics. Uh, but I'm going to try to explain things. And we don't want parentheses sign. We're not running command. We're taking a variable and we're saying take the variable that already exists of x date and start at the very beginning, zero, and go two characters. That would be our year. And then we're going to say forward slash. So it's just going to print the forward slash there. Dollar sign and then our braces, and we're going to say x date, and we're going to say go to the end of the second character and go two characters and print that. Okay, so if we typed everything correctly, now we can output our data. I'm going to delete that line because we're not going to need that. That was just for our reference while creating those variables. And now for our output, we got our input, we divided it up, put it all into variables. Now we're going to say echo card number equals the variable num. And then we'll say echo card holder dollar sign f name dollar sign l name. So it goes first name, last name. And then we're going to say echo expiration date colon dollar sign x date and then just for formatting we're going to say echo and we'll put a little dividing line here because at this point it's going to loop over and ask you to swipe the card again now hopefully we've typed everything correctly we're going to save that now we just created the script so we have to make it executable change mod plus x and the name of our script and then dot slash the name of our script. And at this point, it's going to ask us to swipe the card. So let me grab a card. Let me grab the swiper here. And we're going to swipe. And I typed something wrong. The letter must be a single character. Uh, I wish it told me which line, but it shouldn't be hard to figure out. Uh, cut, 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 cut. Oh, right here. I put a space. I'm betting that is it. So we'll run our code again. And there we go. So it's grabbed the credit card number and displayed it there. Uh, card holder, John Smith, expiration date 15. If I swipe the card again, 
Well, you don't really see anything different because it typed out the same stuff. So the output's the same because it clears the screen and then looped over again. Now at this point, for us to exit the program, we have to kill it with control C. Not a problem. We want to make it a little bit nicer for the end user. So um, what we're going to do here is go back into our code. And we're going to create a if then statement that checks the data that is swiped or typed in, really. If and we're going to check data. So if the data that is inputted equals an empty string, there's there's other ways to do this, but I'm just going to say if the data is empty, well then we're going to echo exiting. And then we can say exit zero, which will completely exit the script. Now we can turn this into an if then, and then you know, we can say else and do the rest. It doesn't really matter because we're gonna be exiting out of the script here if that is true. And if not, it's gonna run the script. So you could do an if else for the rest of this, or you can just, it doesn't really matter in this particular situation. So let's go ahead and run our code again. So we'll run it, and of course we can swipe, and it brings up the information. But if we hit enter, it exits out. So let's go back in here and put a message to the end user saying, um, press enter to exit, so that they know. So you run the code, at this point I can hit enter, and it exits. Or I can swipe a card, see it, and at this point I can hit enter and exit. So you can also make it so if they type exit or type Q for or quit or whatever you want. Um, but I think just hitting enter because you're either going to swipe a card or hit enter to exit. So again, I hope this code, uh, I hope you remember to put this code, a uh, link in the description to it. Uh, it should be up on my Pastebin site, which is a link to on my website, filmsbychris.com. Check out filmsbychris.com. I appreciate you watching. So as always, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, again, if you like my videos and want to support my videos, you can check out my Patreon page. It's patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. There should be a annotation on the screen right now, as well as a link in the description. And uh, there you can help support me on a monthly basis. You can choose to donate anywhere from uh, $5 on up. And uh, there are different rewards depending on how much you support me with. And uh, also there's certain levels where you start getting to have more input towards me on what you want to see. So if there's other topics you like uh, that you want to see that I've gone over, you want me to continue, a uh, good way to you know get that done is to become one of my patrons on Patreon and uh, start supporting me and you'll have more input on those different levels. Uh, certain levels you get to vote on what topics I'm going to go over and of course you have more communication with me so I can hear more of what you want. So as always thank you for those who are supporting me uh, and I hope that you continue to support me. I hope that uh, I can continue doing videos. So thank you again for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. Uh, there should be a link in the description. And I hope that you have a great day actually really simple. It's actually something that's been around for a real long time. Here's an example.